I'm here with uh, Eric Weisinger today. We're going to be talking about a winery that we're going to be uh, putting on the market. And Eric is intimately involved with that and knows a lot of detail. And so, Eric, tell us your background and your company. Sure. Uh, the company that I have is Eric Weisinger Wine Consulting. The vineyard uh, service company I have is uh, Southern Oregon Vineyard Services. Uh, I've been in the wine industry now for about 21 years, uh, about uh, 15 of those as a winemaker. Mm -hmm. The majority of that uh, has been here in Southern Oregon, but uh, in the last probably five years or so, I've, I've uh, been traveling between Australia, New Zealand, California, Oregon, uh, working as well. Good. Well, let's talk about uh, Jim and Alice Nowakowski's uh, vineyard. Uh, it's called Alice's Vineyard, but um, the name will not go with the vineyard. It will be the name of whomever buys it. And so it's an unusual situation and really a great opportunity for a buyer to have their own winery. So tell us a little bit about that and what you know about it and how you're involved. Well, Alice's Vineyard is a very unique piece of property. It's, um, we, there's a two acre Riesling vineyard up there. There's a production facility uh, that will produce currently uh, about 400 cases of premium wine. Let's talk about the water and the you know the exposure to the sun and that type of thing. Tell us a little bit about that and how that is effective for growing wine. Um, the quality of any wine is really a reflection of the quality of the fruit, um, and so it's it's it is paramount that you have a good vineyard site. Jim's side up there is at 3,200 feet, which I think is actually the highest vineyard in Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, it's a west-facing vineyard. It's, it's, it's on a fairly steep slope, so you get lots of sun. The soil itself is um, it's fairly thin topsoil the, with quite a bit of sandstone underneath. So uh, one of the things that, that is not necessarily always good is to have extremely fertile soils oh. with, with uh, Grapevines. They like to struggle a little bit. Sometimes when they do, it, it produces that uh, slightly higher quality fruit. Mm -hmm. So overall, it's uh, it's one of the more unique vineyards in the area. And um, uh, in fact, just the other evening, I was uh, having dinner with some friends who are wine critics and uh, had a, a uh, bottle of Riesling, which we had produced from Jim's, and I didn't tell them where it was from. Uh, they were both very impressed with it. When I told them that it came from Ashland, uh, they didn't think I was serious. They thought it was that good. That is wonderful. That's great. That's... The winery itself is to the side of the home and overlooks the Rogue Valley and Immigrant Lake. It's absolutely spectacular. How many barrels does that, that building actually hold? The barrel cellar will comfortably hold 11 to maybe 13 barrels. Um, that's with the current configuration. There's room to add on to that barrel room, uh, which would almost double the number of barrels which could be uh, stored in there. Uh, Jim has put together a really perfect small production facility. Um, I work in facilities here in Southern Oregon that produce maybe a thousand cases, sometimes two thousand cases. When I work down in New Zealand or Australia, I'm working with Pointers that are producing 400, 500,000 cases. Um, wow. One of the challenges about working in smaller facilities is the equipment. How much equipment do you have? What's the quality of that equipment? Um, Jim, when we were setting all this up, said to me, I want to have the very best small facility possible. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we went out and we purchased really nice equipment. Um, it has everything that a larger production facility has, it's just small. Great, and we will have a list of those, the equipment that's there, so people can take a look at that. So Eric, is there anything you'd want to add or just comment, in, you know, just to let us know um, that maybe we haven't covered? Well, I think that, um, I think that one of the exciting things about uh, Jim's property is Alice's Vineyard and the fact that uh, there is a really beautiful boutique, uh, ready-to-go winery up there um, that has already s established itself a little bit of a reputation. Right. And I think that uh, Southern Oregon is only going to grow. We're still in the infancy mm -hmm. of the wine industry here. I mean, 20 more years from now, we'll look back and say, you know, this was when we were really uh, getting uh, traction. How many um, 
actual wineries are there in in the valley now in southern Oregon? Well, in the um, Applegate and Rogue Valley areas, there's about 30. So it really is a young industry. I mean, actually, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, I've been in the industry here for 20 some odd years and have seen it grow a lot. When I was first uh, first got into the industry, there were only six wineries within the Rogue and Applegate areas. Mm -hmm. And what do you think? I mean, I mean, people are going to compare us with Napa, with you know, you know, the Willamette Valley, etc. And how do you think we're going to compare down the road? Well, I think that Southern Oregon as a wine growing region is very unique because we have the ability to grow so many different types of grapes. We aren't just a Pinot Noir region. We aren't mm -hmm. just a Cabernet Sauvignon region. We can grow Riesling, a Tempranillo, a Syrah, and Chardonnay. That's really one thing that's already setting us apart. There are very few places in Oregon that can grow Syrah, for example, or good Cabernet Franc, and other varieties that are that are that are beginning to come out. We have the heat here. We don't. Uh, we have a fairly long growing season. It's uh, it's it takes a while for any wine region to establish itself. Exactly. And uh, Southern Oregon is now thirty some odd years into it, and uh, it's, it's beginning to show. Great. It lives there, and it is an estate. The home is beautiful. The the building, the outbuildings are gorgeous. And it's also very efficient. I mean, it's set up to actually work. Mm -hmm. And so, would it be possible, based on what you know, uh, to add more to vine, you know, more vines to the property? Uh, yes. There is area down around where the vineyard is that uh, could be cleared, and you could expand um, the current acreage, which I believe is about 1.8 to 2. Uh, I believe that you could almost double that. Eric, we talked about the fact that. Maybe a buyer will come in and they'll want to just hire you to do it all and continue mm -hmm. to do that. Or you would just consult and you mentioned how that would work. Yes. Some of the clients that I, that I work for, um, I, I do pretty much everything for them. I have other clients who have, hired, who, have, who have hired me for a four or five year period where I come in and I teach them how to do it. I teach them how to make one because I feel that in those cases, the consultant's job is to really work themselves out of a job. And so uh, there are certain people that that's exactly what I'm doing for them. I'm bringing them along, teaching them how to produce wine, how to grow grapes. Uh, it is something that takes time, and um, that's, that, that's uh, one of the services that I offer. I exactly. Well, great. I really appreciate it. Thank You're you so welcome. much, Eric.